Hello and welcome to the Practical Pediatric Medical Information Channel. Wow, that's a mouthful. I am MZMD. I'm a board certified pediatrician. I am licensed in several states in the United States. I would like to emphasize that this video and all other videos on this channel are meant to be informational only and are not meant to be a substitute for diagnosis and treatment by your child's doctor. I hope that you will join me on these coming videos and do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, subscribing does not mean that you're paying anything, but that's a way of uh, notifying you when a new video has been uploaded to this channel. So let's proceed to the next topic. child is holding their ear and crying. It very well could be an ear infection. First, let us investigate the anatomy of the ear. This diagram is as if you were looking at someone's face straight on. This would be the right ear. And then from the right ear goes the ear canal, which ends at the eardrum. Behind the eardrum is the middle ear cavity. And going downwards here is what we refer, refer to as the eustachian tube or the drainage tube. You will hear me speak a lot about the ear canal, the eardrum, the middle ear cavity, and the eustachian tube. So try to remember those terms. Here is the inner ear, which we won't speak about today. This is just the inner ear where balance and hearing also occurs. So again, ear canal. This is the big part of the ear, which is called the pinna or the helix. And this is the ear canal. Notice that there is no connection between the ear canal and the middle ear cavity because the eardrum is a solid structure usually. So the eardrum, the middle ear cavity, and then the connection from the middle ear cavity to the back of the throat, which is the eustachian tube, which normally would be open, which would be free of obstruction, which would have no mucus in it, and it also helps with equalizing pressure behind the eardrum uh, with the back of the throat. In children, there are usually two types of ear infections. Let's first speak about otitis externa or the infection of the ear canal, which normally is referred to as swimmer's ear. This type of ear infection comes about by having water in the ear canal, either through swimming or putting your head in a bathtub, and also can occur from irritation or abrasion of the ear canal, typically by using Q-tips. Organisms then get into the tissue of the ear canal, produce inflammation and infection. This is manifested, of course, with ear pain. However, it is usually very tender to touch. So an ear canal infection is typically very tender to touch, especially when you press on this little cartilage right in front of the ear canal entrance called the tragus. It also usually does not have fever associated 
with this type of infection. In addition, the ear canal could be very swollen on visual inspection. The treatment for an ear canal infection is antibiotic eardrops. The second type of ear infection is an infection of the eardrum, sometimes called a middle ear infection, infection in the middle ear cavity, or the medical term is otitis media. This type of ear infection is associated normally with coughs, congestions, and many times with fever. It comes about because of mucus or fluid being in the middle ear cavity. And when this fluid sits there because the eustachian tube, which is the drainage tube of that middle ear cavity, is not functioning well or is obstructed, organisms then find themselves in an environment which is conducive to rapid multiplication and therefore an infection occurs. Pus is then produced in that middle ear cavity which once it hits the eardrum you will see redness or discoloration or bulging of the eardrum. This photograph represents a normal eardrum whose usual appearance is a pearly gray. This photograph is of an infected eardrum and of course you notice the redness and inflammation and the different look to the eardrum. Again this comes about because of the eustachian tube which equalizes pressure. It runs from the middle ear cavity to the back of the throat. It equalizes pressure. It's supposed to only have air in it or maybe fluid which will be easily drained. However, when it's obstructed, nothing can pass back and forth and the middle air cavity is not able to be drained. So that obstruction again leads to an ear infection. The treatment for this type of ear infection is oral antibiotics. Eardrum infections may have certain complications. Some of the more common complications may be a ruptured eardrum or also in some cases hearing loss which results in speech delay. Sometimes the infection occurs so quickly that pus pushes up against the eardrum and the only way it can go is through the eardrum which is a solid structure because the eustachian tube is plugged and nothing can drain through there. So it pushes up against the eardrum and the eardrum ruptures or perforates. And you would notice fluid or discolored secretions coming out of the ear canal. The other complication of eardrum infections is that if you have repeated ear infections the eardrum may eventually scar and will therefore not move properly and your hearing will be muffled which would lead to decreased hearing and also in younger children who are learning to speak they will have delayed speech. Sometimes fluid can accumulate in that middle ear cavity and be there for a long time and it has the same result where the eardrum is unable to move the way it's supposed to move to allow you to hear which leads to hearing being muffled and a result of that is speech delay in a child who is now learning to speak because it is critical in speech that you hear properly. Because repeated ear infections and prolonged retention of fluid behind the eardrum in the middle ear cavity can lead to hearing loss and speech delay, sometimes 
the treatment has to become more aggressive, especially if antibiotics are not working. So what happens in some cases, tubes need to be placed through the eardrum, so they are placed where there's a tube is connecting the middle ear cavity to the ear canal, which then allows fluid to move back and forth and air to move back and forth. Sometimes adenoidectomies have to be done. The adenoids are very similar to tonsils, but you cannot visually see them from the outside. They sit behind the nasopharyngeal area, and sometimes if they're enlarged because of allergies or repeated viral infections or repeated inflammation, they will enlarge, and when they enlarge because of their proximity to the eustachian tubes, they will press up against the eustachian tube and cause an obstruction, and therefore that would lead to an ear infection. So removing the adenoids would then decrease that obstruction and theoretically will improve the frequency of ear infections. It is sometimes remarkable the improvement in speech in a very rapid amount of time after tubes are placed in the ears. There are other reasons for a child pulling or complaining about ear pain. Sometimes there is referred pain from, for example, a sore throat. Sometimes very little children, while they're teething, will pull on the ear because there is referred pain from the teething on the gums to the ear. Also, the fluid being behind the eardrum or in the middle ear cavity can also cause pressure where the child will pull. Allergies can also obstruct the eustachian tube, which then changes the pressure or stops the equalization of pressure, which will then lead to also ear pulling or complaining of discomfort in the ear. Sometimes impaction of wax in the ear may cause muffled hearing and also complaints of problems with the ear. In conclusion, there are several reasons for a child pulling on the ear or complaining of pain in their ear. However, the most common ones are ear infections. And the two types of ear infections, again, are ear canal infections or otitis externa. Otitis externa is very tender to touch, does not usually have an association with fever, and the treatment is an antibiotic eardrop. The otitis media, or the eardrum infection, usually occurs in conjunction with cough and runny nose. Many times will have fever and is usually not tender to touch. The treatment for an otitis media is an oral antibiotic. Hope this video has been helpful, and I hope that you join me in my next video. Next time I will be speaking about something a little bit different. I'll be speaking about how do researchers go about proving that a treatment or a medication or a vaccination or a procedure actually works. This discussion will tie in to future informational discussion on vaccines as well as natural or holistic treatments. That is all for now, and this is MZMD wishing you a healthy life.